Who does NASCAR want to win the NASCAR Cup Series Championship? One of my favorite things about NASCAR fans are the number of wild conspiracies that they come up with, whether it's that Dale Jr. had cheated up cars at super speedways, or Jeff Gordon had trash control, or Tony Stewart had trash control as well. It doesn't matter. Everybody in NASCAR, fans, drivers, crew members, all like, they always tend to have some sort of conspiracy that they believe in. Whether one team's cheating, or NASCAR did this and made this ruling because they like this guy, or they wanted this dude to win, which... In the past, has NASCAR made decisions that have influenced the outcome of races to better position a guy to get the win that would be a better storyline or more popular? I believe yes. I will be some people that will say no, that they're objective and they, they're very fair and unbiased. Eh, agree to disagree on that one. So when it comes down to it, if NASCAR had their choice from their championship four, Chris Rebell, William Byron, Ryan Blaney, and Kyle Larson, who would they want to win the championship the most? And obviously, somebody in the NASCAR marketing department has certainly sat down and had this discussion of, well, you know, in an ideal world, we'll have so-and-so win. And who is that so-and-so? So let's take break it down real quick, because I think there's a couple of clear answers here. The clearest answer for what it comes to who do they not want to win the championship, it's Christopher Bell. And no offense to Christopher Bell, but he just doesn't really have a personality. He's got the same personality as white paper. Uh, he's the Andy Dalton of NASCAR. He wins more than Andy Dalton did, or at least, you know, performs better than Dalton did. But when it comes down to it, he's not an interesting person. And that's not necessarily his fault. He's just not really the most extroverted guy, which is, again, you know, uh, it's everybody's prerogative. Like, he just wants to drive race cars. I completely understand that. But his Joe Gibbs racing team doesn't allow him to go out and do any dirt racing anymore. And Kyle Larson called Chris Bell one of the best drivers in the world just a few weeks ago, except for the fact that he really doesn't get to display it outside of the NASCAR Cup series, which is, honestly, it sucks for him, and it, it's bad for the fans, too, because having Chris Bell show up at your local dirt track is pretty cool. I've seen him race at Lawrenceburg. It's cool when he shows up there. Everybody gets excited. It's like, oh, there's a NASCAR guy coming down here to race this, and he's an absolute wheel man. And I think if they were able to build him up as this great driver, the same way that Kyle Larson has been riding this absolute high of people calling him the best race car driver alive, the best driver in the world, maybe the greatest of all time. People have said that, not me. Uh, you know, Christopher Bell can be in that same conversation as well. But when it comes down to it, he's not really that interesting. He's not really that marketable. For He's 27 or 28 at this point, and he's got the face of a 16-year-old. Again, not his fault. Genetics. He's a family man, like he's got a wife already, that's cool, but you can't really make him into this like rock star sort of personality. He doesn't win enough necessarily to be like that guy, to be this dominant force in the series. Like I said, he's just not that marketable. He drives for a team that is pretty hated amongst like most NASCAR fan bases and Joe Gibbs racing. And that stems from Denny being a part of the team to people not liking Joe to the whole Toyota thing. And then you have Chris Bell replacing Matt Kenseth, so the Kenseth fans don't like him. But when it comes down to it, NASCAR, they're not happy they have to print up this 20 merch for him potentially to win, but they're doing it. But if they had their choice, Chris Bell would not win the championship. And honestly, his finish back in the spring of a sixth place, his finish in this race last year when he was part of the championship for was a 10th place finish. Not ideal for him. I don't think they necessarily have too much to worry about. He's not my pick to win the title, and he's certainly not the NASCAR marketing executive's pick either. So that brings us to the other three. And honestly, I think that the other three are a dream for anybody in NASCAR when it comes to marketing and when it comes to storylines, because all three of them have perfect storylines, and all three of them are very marketable as well. We'll start with William Byron. Now, I know people are going to be like, William Byron doesn't really have a personality either, and I don't disagree. He might not have the funny clips on the radio like Chris Rebell does where he's like, we're having fun, and which cracks me up all the time, or even just this last week or, or back at Homestead where he's like, we're tight, 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 tight. Chris Rebell is objectively pretty good on the radio. He just doesn't really show that in interviews. William Byron, on the other hand, he's a lot more aggressive on the radio now than he used to be. That Liberty sponsorship is just that, sponsorship. That's not necessarily what he believes anymore. Uh, because he will just straight up start into a profanity lace tirade on the radio now, which is kind of funny when you think about it, because he used to be this, this like tiny little kid, and you're like, oh, look at him, he's such a like little good religious boy. Ugh, not so much anymore. But between him and Rudy, his crew chief, Rudy Fugel, they might not be the most marketable two 
you know, America for the most part. But what they do have behind them and what is an absolute dream for anybody in the NASCAR marketing department is the fact that he runs the number 24. And they can take that 24 car and could talk about continuing on Jeff Gordon's legacy. The 24 car is a championship again. 24 car got its fifth title as a car number. Blah, 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 blah. He drives for NASCAR's most successful team and Rick Hendrick. Jeff Gordon will be there to celebrate with him. That is an absolute dream. You're going to have the photo op with him and Gordon. You're going to have the 24 car in victory lane once again with the exalted colors on it, with that day glow 24 on the side of it. That's exactly what they want. Hendrick Motorsports probably also wants that as well. It is a marketing dream for them if William Byron wins because of that Jeff Gordon legacy. He doesn't even have that much to do with William Byron, if we're being completely honest, although he could be the next big star, right? Because he has six wins this year. He's had a breakout season. And the only problem that he really is facing is like the first time that that team's ever been put in a pressure situation last week at Martinsville, they damn near cracked like they were the Denny Hamlin of NASCAR at this point. So he's marketable. He's interesting. He's dating Ryan Blaney's sister. They've got a whole bunch of like little things going on. It's He's marketable, but that 24 car and that legacy that goes along with that number, that is what would be the most marketed portion of this. Lionel would probably make like championship die cast for him and Gordon. It'd be a whole thing. So William Byron, definitely in that category of like, yeah, they would like to see him win. Now let's talk about Ryan Blaney, his brother-in-law. Although that seemed to be news to Blaney, who was like, did he propose? I don't think he did, but regardless, Ryan Blaney is the closest thing NASCAR has to a rock star. Basically, he has everything that NASCAR could possibly want out of a champion. Everything that Chase Elliott isn't, Ryan Blaney is. Interesting, outgoing, willing to talk to media, funny, interesting, willing to talk to media, has a personality, all the things that Chase Elliott doesn't do. And I know I listed those things twice for a reason. Chase Elliott is a good race car driver. Chase Elliott was a good champion. Chase Elliott isn't necessarily very interesting. And Chase Elliott honestly doesn't seem like he wants to be the most popular driver and everything that comes along with that. But for Ryan Blaney, he is the closest thing. He's got the tattoos. He honestly does kind of live that rock star lifestyle. He has a smoke show girlfriend, goes along with the whole uh, thing. He's got the beard, which it goes against the Penske standards there. That Penske Perfect uh, beard is exactly not that. It is not Penske Perfect. He's got the sponsors. He drives for a great team. He's got the wins. He's had a bit of a breakout season here, finally. Uh, he was called the Casey Kane, uh, the modern Casey Kane now, and I think he took that to heart earlier in the year. Goes out once Coke 600, now racked off two wins in the last five races. He would be a great champion, if we're being completely honest. They can send him on all the late-night shows, Good sense of humor, can crack jokes, can do all that, represents the sport well, can dumb NASCAR down to the casuals, can talk it up to the diehards. He's exactly who NASCAR needs to be a champion. And I honestly think he's pretty fired up about it too. Like I said, two wins in the last five races, just went at Martinsville. And saw his best friend Chase Elliott win a championship. That probably had a lot of fire under his butt. His brother-in-law, William Byron, is also in the championship four as well. So at least his sister is going to leave happy, potentially. She has a 50-50 shot of leaving happy, I should say. Uh, Ryan Blaney would be an absolute dream for NASCAR. And then that brings us to Kyle Larson. And Kyle Larson winning a second Cup Series championship, while it not, might not be great for NASCAR in the long run, because like the more championships he collects, the sooner he's likely to leave and just go do dirt racing, especially now that he has a competitor to the World of Outlaws. But him winning a second title in three years certainly drums up that whole discussion of greatest race car driver alive. Where does Kyle, uh, Kyle Bush, where does Kyle Larson rank amongst the greats in NASCAR? Two-time champ. There's not a ton of two-time champs out there. And there's only one, two. I almost said one. There's only two two-time champions in this playoff format era in Kyle Busch and Joey Logano. So Kyle Larson can join that club in three years right here. And if you're like, well, if he's won two out of three, that means that we're continuing the trend here. He's on that that uh, 2010s San Francisco Giants run of winning a championship every other year for three years, three World Series in a row, technically five years. Uh, that means that Larson's going to have three championships in five years. That would be absolutely wild. Like something we haven't seen since Jimmy Johnson and Jeff Gordon racked off something like that. So that would be a huge discussion point as well. And it's super marketable because again, Kyle Larson winning the championship, he will be at every dirt track across the country next year at some point, more than likely. It kind of depends on this whole 
World of Outlaws versus High Limit All-Star Circuit, however that plays out. This winner, whenever he races anywhere else, two-time Cup Series champion Kyle Larson. He's going to the Indy 500 next year to race for Aero McLaren and Hendrick Motorsports in that number 17 car. Two-time Cup Series champion at the Indy 500, racing in the Indy 500. It is a marketing dream. I cannot stress enough how much NASCAR would love for Kyle Larson to win this championship. And honestly, when I think about who I think could possibly win this championship, and I've looked at the numbers and all that other stuff, it kind of comes down to Ryan Blaney versus Kyle Larson for me. I think those are the two top guys going into this race. And I think NASCAR is in a perfect spot when it comes to marketability of whoever their future champion is. So if I'm putting my tinfoil hat on, I'm saying that they want Kyle Larson to win the title here. And I don't think they'll officiate it any differently. Will they look the other way if one of these cars is cheated up? I think they look the other way when all four of these cars are a little bit cheated up, as long as somebody's not doing something super drastic, like bringing a bigger engine, looking at you, Richard Petty. Uh, So yeah, I think that they're totally looking for Kyle Larson or Ryan Blaney to win this championship. William Byron, they'd be more than happy with that because of the legacy. Christopher Bell, they're like, all right, we're going to be happy for him, but we're not happy about this. Like when Matt Crafton won the Truck Series Championship without winning a race all season in the playoff format, they're like, we're not happy about this, but we're going to go out there and smile, even though, you know, inside we feel like Gary Bettman every time he walks out. It's like, oh, this is demoralizing. So let me know who do you think NASCAR wants to win the championship in the comments. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog.